What's up, you guys? James Strickland here. Welcome to week 45 on my road to 700 pounds on bench press and week three of meat prep for Boss of Bosses 6. Uh, had a very good week this week, as you probably could tell from the thumbnail. A 2K total, and that's uh, in training, seven and a half weeks out from a big meet. Uh, I could not be happier. Um, I'm going to go ahead and uh, dive right into the recap, but before I do, you might notice there's a sign behind me, and yes, it is my birthday. Uh, 39 years young, feeling great. Um, 298 pounds, six foot one. If you guys want to know all the stats, but uh, I know what you guys are really here for, and it's the actual training video. So here we go. All right. So as always, starting off, this is my warm up set here. 405, moving faster than I ever have, I think. Moving on, 495. Still waiting on my buddy Jeff Yonker to get here and spot me out on my top set. Moving that fine. Got 585 on the bar today. This is my top single. Uh, we are still keeping uh, it just a little bit lower on bench uh, to work on the sticking point, as I'll touch on here a little bit later in the video. Uh, but this is nice and uh, nice and easy for me just to keep my CNS uh, primed. Uh, I don't want to go super, super heavy, uh, but 585 for me is not um, going to tax me too much. It's just keeping the weight heavy enough so when we do ramp it up, it's not having to ramp up very high. Uh, my main working set today is 545 for a triple. This is to keep the volume uh, at, a, at a steady pace. Uh, we are in meat prep, uh, but as, if you're following along, uh, with the road to 700 pounds, uh, we worked up to a 665 a few uh, weeks ago. Uh, that quite didn't, you know, work out so well uh, for the meat. So we backed it off. We exposed the sticking point, and of course, we backed it off after that. And now we're moving in to uh, some squat deadlift training. But uh, definitely, am focusing on. There's a sticking point about six inches up, right in here. You can see it exposed on that third rep, uh, but it's definitely exposed when we're upwards of uh, 700 pounds. But uh, this is one of the accessories that I am working on to help with the explosion off the chest uh, and to blast through that sticking point. Right now we're trying to figure out exactly where these rack uh, safety pins basically need to be uh, for a dead press. This is right off the chest, so it's a little bit low, but obviously it can work on that explosion right there. Uh, we raised it up just a little bit so that it's, it's about uh, it's about six inches up is, or so is where I'm actually needing to, to fly through a sticking point, as you can see it right there. Uh, so when I'm starting from a dead press, I actually have no stretch reflex to help. Uh, so I'm really having to work on uh, building up explosion without a stretch reflex. Uh, and that will help tremendously when we have a lot of weight on the bar. Uh, as you can see, I'm working up to my top set here on the dead press was 455. Uh, I've done a lot more than this, uh, but the idea here is not to move as much weight as you possibly can on this. It's to really just focus on that muscle contraction. Um, of course, I've got my rows as a staple in my training. Uh, this is some dumbbell rows, uh, chest supported. I just do it on a, on a face down on incline. A lot of you guys ask uh, how to set up for like a seal row if you can't uh, do it in your gym. This is a good alternative to that, uh, just face down on incline. Moving on to my IYT raises. This is for shoulder health. Uh, it's not supposed to be super heavy. Uh, these are uh, 12 and a half pound dumbbells, uh, but just going through uh, the motion, uh, mind muscle connection is the idea between these. But um, so kind of to expand on the idea behind bench right now, if you guys haven't been following along, is to uh, really focus on the weakness, the weak spot uh, in the actual travel of the bar path, and that is about six inches up. So flies here are gonna help with that. Uh, any type of rows uh, for your back to help with that explosion. And then obviously working on specificity, which is uh, working on the actual point that you can identify as the weak spot. That would be, uh, for me, about six inches up or so. So about five inches up, I'll work on uh, with bands and chains, uh, dead press, uh, and those are specific to the bench that I'll, I'll do. Uh, I'm obviously keeping triceps in the game here. Triceps are, are something that's it's a staple in my training. 
Um, very much a close grip bencher, even though I've moved my grip out um, a couple inches wider than maybe my last competition. Uh, but this is the whole stack, so it does take a lot to activate the triceps. Uh, but they've gotten me out of a lot of trouble. Uh, don't have issues locking out weight. Um, or at least I haven't had that, that issue. Uh, day two here, really excited about day two. Uh, this is one of my last warm-ups, 585. Um, anytime I get under uh, several plates, uh, I'm definitely going to be cautious. Uh, definitely want to be safe and set up in a rack. Um, but any given day with squats, because it is fairly, um, I, I would say new, because honestly, I've not been training heavy, heavy legs uh, for very many years. Um, a lot of you may assume that I just have been training squats for 10 years or more, uh, but over 500 pounds, that's not the case. So this is one of my last warm-ups here. I was a little bit nervous because uh, 685 is not the most I've ever done in training, but it's within 15 pounds. Sunk it and just flew up with it. Um, I was really happy with that rep. The top set today is 725 pounds. This is a 25 pound gym PR, training PR. Uh, the last time I hit this was about a year ago, uh, or last time I hit anything uh, near this was 700 pounds in the gym. Went on to a meet and had kind of a bad meet and ended up only going away with 650. Uh, I couldn't come up with 683. Uh, this was the June meet and where I totaled 1984. Uh, worked on, uh, this was high bar by the way, and this is high bar here. Uh, did um, 700 in training uh, then and missed, the, missed it at the meet. Did only 685 uh, for a slow single before Boss of Bosses and nailed 705 in competition. So this is a 20 pound all time PR for me. And uh, let's see how it looks. You can tell I, I like how that feels. Big air, internally brace. Good depth. I am happy with that. I am very, very excited about that lift. And I think there's a lot more in the tank. Uh, in fact, I know there is. I'm asking them how my depth was. I went and did a video review right after that just to make sure, and we are good to go. This is a uh, static hold slash walkout. Uh, I have the, have the pin set up uh, just under full lockout just in case I lose it. I don't want to uh, hurt myself. Uh, and you know this is definitely more than I've ever squatted um, by a lot. So I want to be safe here. So steady on the walkout. This is ba mainly to feel the weight, to get acclimated to the weight. Uh, and honestly, the, the way that I pick the weight is it's, it's a weight that I want to squat in the near future, uh, very near future. And so uh, I think with the way that this feels. Uh, today it felt a little heavier. Uh, that was only 765, but I've walked out 800 uh, last week and it felt really, really good. Moving on, got my, uh, this is 470 pounds for speed squats. I got some triples here, working on really just firing through. Uh, they may not look super fast and sometimes they're faster than others. Really just kind of depends on the day. The idea here is the intent. Uh, it's just like with speed bench uh, or speed deadlifts or anything that's, that's speed work. Uh, just because it doesn't look fast doesn't mean that it wasn't a speed set. Uh, especially after you're doing one rep uh, or really, really heavy, it takes a lot of energy to, to move that fast. Last warm up here with, uh, or actually second to last warm up here with deadlifts, 585. Grip is holding up well. We've been working on some static holds and some plate holds. Uh, this is 675. The top set for today is just 700. Uh, this is still working on building up the calluses, building up the grip strength. Uh, there's really no reason to race any much, much heavier than this. Uh, 750 plus will be there very, very soon. Uh, the strength is already there, but the grip, since we've been working with straps, we've got to kind of acclimate ourselves to it. Working out there. And this is the last heavy deadlift of the day. This is the one that rounded out the 2010 training total for the day.
Back is definitely pumped up uh, quite a bit from combining squats and deadlifts. Uh, one thing I definitely recommend for that, if you have some issues with that, is uh, taking the supplement uh, called Taurine, and you can get that at pretty much any any store. Uh, it's ten bucks, maybe less. Shout out to Texas Power Bars for giving me my uh, my training bars. This Texas deadlift bar is amazing, and it can definitely handle the weight. I'm showing you guys here, uh, if you want to pause it and look, I'm just kind of showing you where the, where my grip strength is slipping. And so I'm definitely paying attention to that area. And that's where I'm showing you the fingers that I'm using uh, for the static plate holds. Uh, that chalk just kind of identifies where the bar is slipping um, so that I can identify what to work on. Uh, once again, identifying a weakness and working on it. Obviously, we've got our lat pull downs here, some more back exercises. Back is key to all lifts, there is really no reason in the world that you should neglect your back. Um, I'd work back obviously about four times a week, uh, at least once every training day I'm hitting some form of back, either upper most of the time or once a week lower. Working uh, my stretches here, this is just a weighted uh, straight arm fully extended dumbbell pullover. You guys have probably seen this a million times in the past, but I definitely want to keep this in here. Uh, it is important. Uh, even though it's not real glamorous, this exercise can definitely stretch those pecs out, keep you healthy, uh, which is the name of the game. I worked on some more volume here this week with some decline bench. This is, uh, I believe, 10 reps uh, or 8 reps of uh, 405. Got a spot just to be safe because there's really no way uh, to get out from underneath that, that bar and there's no safety pins. I put some dumbbells there just in case, but definitely wanted a spot. Don't want a guillotine effect here. I definitely like to, to work in decline presses to save the shoulders, but to get a little extra volume in the, uh, in the chest each week. Last thing of the day is tricep pushdowns. Uh, this is the whole stack just to finish off the triceps for the week. But that is it. So hope you guys are uh, following along with the training. If you're not already, uh, go ahead and subscribe because I'm going to be coming out with uh, new training every single week, uh, following along to my boss of bosses prep and further, whatever is after that. Uh, really, really excited to share it with you guys. Uh, I really do appreciate you guys uh, for watching and kind of following along on my journey. Uh, definitely like uh, that you guys are submitting comments and questions. This week, though, I'm going to cover something a little bit different um, that is a common question and almost kind of a concern that I'll get a lot of guys uh, and, and girls, too, uh, mentioning on DMs and things like that, and that is overall training strategy. Uh, a lot of guys will ask, you know, what, they're, what, what should they do next if they're training for a certain weight, and I'll give them some general advice. And one thing that I've, I get from a lot of people is, and I don't think it's on purpose, I think it's just ingrained in a lot of people's um, it, psyche when it comes to training, and that is to constantly go heavy in order to keep and maintain your strength. That is so far from the truth, uh, it's not even funny. Now, I know this for a fact because I have been there and I've done that, and it works for a certain amount of time, and then you hit a wall. You hit a plateau and you can't go any further. So I'm going to give you guys an example with kind of a, a standard weight. You may or may not be at this level or higher, uh, but let's say 225. And somebody will reach out and they'll say, hey, I got a 225 pound bench and I want to get to 250. Or I want to get to 300 or whatever number it is. And it doesn't have to be bench. It could literally be any, any lift, but we'll just use bench in this uh, circumstance. And they'll say, you know, what, what, do you, what do you recommend? And I always ask how their training looks. And most of the time, 90% of the time, 99% of the time, it's they're working with 90% or heavier of that 225. Uh, so they're, they might be doing 200 every time they hit the gym. And that might be once a week. It might be four times a week. It honestly doesn't matter um, for this example. It does matter. But for this example, I'm going to keep it simple. And let's say you're going in the gym and you're a 225 bencher for one rep, paused or unpaused, it doesn't matter. 
and you go in and you do 200 pounds four times a week or even once a week, you're literally going more than 90% of that 225 and your body never has a chance to break down and get properly strong. Even if you're going 90% all the time and then you're doing a bunch of reps after that or you're doing you know, 150 times 10, four times, but you go and hit that 200 or 220 or 215 once a week, you're not allowing your body to actually grow. Uh, now, there are some training programs out there that are a little bit different than maybe a linear progression, uh, but basically the same concept is the same, or the, the concept is the same. Um, you want to build your muscle and you want to build your strength over time. Uh, the best way that I've found out for myself and for most of my clients uh, in my program is actually based on this same strategy, at least for the main sets, is you want to build a base. You want to build a solid base, solid foundation, and you want to go from there and kind of pyramid up. And I know I've covered this a little bit in the past, but this is general uh, information for most athletes out there, even elite athletes. You see most power lifters or most, most strength athletes when they're peaking for a competition, they're getting rid of all the extra reps and sets and they're doing one rep and they're working up heavier and heavier each week for that competition. So even if you don't compete, you might be wanting to get a better one rep max. We'll just call that day that you want to hit that one rep max your competition date. So what I've done in my own training, for example, um, the last time I went for a meet, I did a 22 week cycle starting on week one, even though I'm a 672 pound bencher, I went with 440 for two sets of 10. So that's like 65% of 672. I didn't hit 90% until week 17. Just to give you an idea of how long it can take to build up some solid strength. And I didn't hit anything above that until or, well, the last, what, five weeks uh, until the competition. So with that in mind, a lot of you guys are asking, how do I get to 250 from 225? And you're asking, how do I do it in three weeks or eight weeks? It's not going to happen. If it does, then you're lucky. You haven't reached the, that wall yet, but you will. So with that in mind, you got to be willing to less, lighten up the load a little bit, work on some reps, build a foundation, work on your weaknesses. Take my training for an example. Uh, I can definitely go in the gym at any given time and bench well into the 600s. It's not doing me any good to keep doing that every week if I'm still if I'm still focusing on staying strong all the time and literally being able to walk around at any given point in time and say that I can bench 672, my body's going to break down. If you're trying to walk around and bench 225 every single day of the year, then you better be a 400 a 500 pound bencher in order to say you can bench 225 at any given point in time. So don't let your current level of strength determine what your absolute level of strength could be if you were to peak properly. So with that in mind, if you guys have questions, uh, I'm always open to talk about you know, my training and how things are going. Shoot me a comment if, it didn't, if I didn't clarify that for you. Uh, I know sometimes it just takes a certain way of saying it for you to you know, kind of get it. But uh, you know, shoot me an email, uh, swimhackgmail.com. I'll talk about it, give you whatever advice you need to get. But uh, I'm not going to do any kind of the, the actual Q&As this week just to save on some time. But um, I do want to bring up something. I don't know if you've noticed. I'm wearing a hospital band, if you could tell. Uh, my sister-in-law had um, her baby a little bit early. Uh, she was actually was not due until October. And... Um, she had a, a premature baby. Everybody's fine right now, but they're enduring a lot of uh, medical costs, uh, parking costs, just going and seeing the baby and things like that. And so I'm going to put a GoFundMe link down below. If you guys have any inkling to help me out, please just drop maybe a dollar or so. I mean, it's, I think parking per day there is like $9. So any little bit helps. Uh, and we've got a GoFundMe. I think we right now we're sitting um, right around the $1,200 mark or something. We're trying to raise $5,000 for them. And if I can just get each one of you guys to do $1 or even 50 cents, I would be so, so grateful. I would really appreciate it. Uh, but um, I'm going to go ahead and wrap up the video this week. Uh, next week is a deload, week 46. So everything's going to be back down to about 75% just to keep uh, 
the volume kind of going, but the weights are definitely going to be lower. I could be able to rest a little bit, recover. Wife and I are going to be traveling a little bit, so that'll help out uh, with not having to hit a gym and be crazy about things all week. But um, very excited. The week after that, we're definitely going to be ramping things up. We're only going to be about five weeks out from the meet. So our uh, squats, deadlift, and bench are just going to go sky high. Uh, and hopefully we can stay safe and injury-free and uh, put a meet total together. No idea what we're going to be looking at. It's, it's kind of crazy, but I'm very excited. But uh, if you guys haven't already subscribed, please definitely subscribe to the channel. Like the video. Share it with your friends. Uh, if you guys are on Instagram, you can check me out at swimhack and uh, i will see you guys next week i really appreciate you guys tuning in check me out week 46 see ya